When should you make your first Morse code contact? When are you ready? The question I asked myself was, when will I be good enough? I almost feel like I have a moral obligation to share this with you because when it was shared with me, it had such a tremendous impact. So when I say what I'm about to share with you, I think could possibly change your life. Uh, it's coming from someone that when it was shared with me, it changed my life in a big way. And to put it simply, my secret for getting on the air is do so before you feel ready. And I'm going to give you a cheat code in order for that to be possible. The number one predicament new CW ops put themselves into is this impending belief towards what level of proficiency they need to reach before they can get on the air. And that stems from fear. And it stems from the fact that they'll feel shame if the QSO or Morse code contact doesn't go perfectly. And that is the number one hurdle to people getting on the air is that apprehension and that preoccupation with worst case scenario. So what I'm about to give you is actually gonna rid you from any of that. You're not gonna have to be worried. You're not gonna have to be afraid. You're simply gonna have to use this cheat code. And again, this is coming from someone who, at the time, I believe my first Morse code contact was months and months away from just due to where my copying ability was at at the time. And then somebody showed me this and I got on the air within that same week and the rest was history. So what that is, is a, is a POTUS script. Yes, it's linked in the description. And yes, this is the actual piece of paper I used uh, for my first ever Morse code contact. This is a Parks on the Air script. And the reason this is a cheat code is this is gonna give you everything you need to send in the exchange. And you have no copying responsibility whatsoever. Meaning you don't need to understand Morse code with one exception, one asterisk. The only thing you need to be able to do and this was taught to me by my buddy TJ, K9KJ. He, sh he shared a YouTube short very early on in my Morse code learning journey, early 2024, that essentially said, rule number one of CW, be able to copy your call sign at any speed. This is 100% true. You should be able to copy your call sign. I don't care if as a Morse code operator, you never reach the point of 15 words per minute, 20 words per minute on air activity doesn't matter. Get on the air at whatever speed you feel comfortable, but be able to copy your call sign at 20 words per minute, 25 words per minute, 30, 35 words per minute. It should just be a sound to you and you'll get enough repetition with your call sign that that will become true. But when you're hunting POTA, you really don't have to worry about those extreme speeds. Most of the operators are going to be between 15, 17, 18, maybe 20, 22, 24, and a few of them upwards of 25, 26 words per minute and you should be really good at copying your call sign. So we're gonna go through the script together right now because I firmly believe this will set you free. This will give you an opportunity to get on the air with Morse code. But first, I have to triumph with you over this belief of fear and potential shame and embarrassment of getting on the air that first time and it not going well. Or feeling like you're gonna make a fool of yourself and people are gonna see it and the activators are gonna think you're the worst CW op in the history of the world. So let me make something very, very clear. With the POTUS script, what you're going to practice is being able to one, copy your call sign, know what your copies, uh, know what your call sign sounds like, or maybe a, a, a uh, sorry, a partial call. So a lot of times I'm hunting and when I send KI7QCF, they might only hear CF. Uh, and they'll send back CF question mark, or they just hear a seven. If the activator sends back any characters in your call sign with a question mark, just send your full call again. That is the first and foremost skill that you need to be good at. I activate almost every single day, and there are still operators out there with thousands of contacts that aren't super good at hearing their own call sign. Or frankly, it might just be bad band conditions and the frequency, there's a lot of QSB where the signal's fading. But your obligation is one, be able to copy your call sign from there, you only have one responsibility. Send the RST, and then, again, this is all laid out in the script, but RST is readability, signal strength and tone. Fun fact, my first like 100 contacts, 559 meant your, your signal sucked, 599 meant your signal was pretty good. I didn't worry about 529, 549, 589. If you can send those numbers, great, but just get good at sending 559, and by the way, nobody sends nine, we all send N, November, 55 dot it. Get good at 599, and if you screw up the fives, nobody cares, we all know what you're saying. Um, and then know how to send your state. So if you're in Oklahoma, 
that's okay. Or if you're in Oregon, it's O-R, Utah, U-T. And that's it. Um, this script, if you read through it and you practice it, I'll link a few videos as well where people go through this. I have another video where I go through this. But this will set you free and you have no copying responsibility whatsoever. All you have to do is know how to copy your call sign. And I will fight anyone in the comments. Go ahead and push back. In fact, that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna talk to you guys about worst case scenario. So I'm gonna leave, we're gonna end this video with worst case scenario, okay? So right now there is a POTA activator headed out to a park. He just identified it. He's been using maps, he's been studying. It's a six hour drive for him. And he's headed there. It's a park that's never been activated. So he's very, very excited. The train is unknown. He knows he's gonna have to park at a gate and then he's gonna have to hike about two miles. He's gonna get into this Atno, all time new one, never before activated. And it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but He's noticing that there's propagation challenges as he enters it and it's a 359 degree canyon. That's right, 359 degree canyon. And he brought a four foot whip. So his four foot whip antenna from his QRP rig is gonna have a very low takeoff angle. And frankly, the only area that the signal is gonna get out is probably that one degree, the trail that he walked in on. And now let's say that you're in a, a coastal city in say Lincoln City, Oregon, and his one degree propagation path is literally just to you, but frankly, it's more so bouncing off the ionosphere and into the Pacific Ocean, somewhere uninhabited, but you're able to copy him like 549559. And you were the only person that day, in, that day in Lincoln City, Oregon, that is operating CW or on the air. And he's calling CQ and he's trying to make contacts and get his park activated. However, something went horribly wrong when he got into the park that he had scheduled the activation. He broke his ankle, it's a compound fracture and he's bleeding out. And unless he gets help, he's likely going to die. This escalated very quickly and I'm very sorry, but this is worst case scenario, so let's just play it out. Your responsibility as a hunter is one thing. It's to send your call sign and send him as RST. He's sending SOS, CQ distress. He's saying, hey man, could you help me out? Mountain lines are closing in, this could be it. This could be the end for me. I really need you to help me. That's not your responsibility as a hunter. This is your first ever Morse code contact. You can't possibly copy the plethora of distress calls and help that he's, he's sending you his grid square. He's saying, hey, could you get authorities here, search and rescue? It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to get the park hunted and have the excitement of making your first ever Morse code contact like I did. This is my buddy, Tim, k 5 oh twice. He sent me a write-up. He gave me this whole story. Uh, he sent me a QSL card. He was so excited that he was my first QSO. Um, so again, look, the newspaper article comes out tomorrow. It says, uh, parks on the air, amateur radio operator perishes at XYZ ha habitat management area. Looking at his log, looks like he did make one contact with you. And he was, he ultimately met his demise. I'm telling you guys in a court of law, no one's gonna hold you responsible. It was your first Morse code contact. You couldn't have possibly copied everything that was coming to you. So that was worst case scenario. The odds of that are extremely, extremely unlikely. But I'm telling you in the court of law, the jury, they're just gonna be excited. But dude, you made your first Morse code contact? That's amazing, man. What what did he give you? Like, I don't know, I think it was 559. But that's, that's worst case, guys. I really don't think that's gonna happen. But I'm telling you right here, nobody holds you responsible in that moment. If that's me, if I'm the activator, I'm, I'm gonna die, but I'm actually excited for you. I'm like, wow, dude, you made your first Morse code contact. That's amazing, congratulations. Um, so this is linked in the description. Go use it. I'm telling you guys right now, it's very simple to follow. I'll link a few videos that go over it more in depth, step by step. But you should be hunting POTA today because all you need to know how to do is copy your call sign and then send a signal report in your state. And guys, you're gonna start stacking QSOs. And guess what? When you have the fulfillment of actually using Morse code on the air, actually the fulfillment of your hard work paying off, guess what happens to your learning curve? Oh my gosh, as someone that did this, it'll skyrocket. I became 10X the CW op because I started having fun with CW instead of screwing around on a stupid app or watching some stupid YouTubers videos. Some guy that posts like three shorts a day, blonde hair, rosy cheeks from Utah. I had way more fun actually using Morse code on the air and so will you. Very fine business, 73, dit dit. I hope this changes your life. Uh, thank you, God bless.